it's an important week. It's an important day to day uh, leading up to what's coming out in a few days time. So simply this. How are you both doing today? I'm doing good. Um, yeah, I'm good. Larry's feeling a bit rough, um, but persevering. we're persevering. We're kind of gearing up for our obviously EP release party and our release on Wednesday. So yeah. lots, lots, lots to kind of lots to be excited about. Um, and yeah, just trying to like take it as easy as possible before the big day on Wednesday. Take it as easy as possible. That is Great choice of words, because hopefully this period of time, it's very hard to do that. Um, even if there's nothing, say, necessarily to do work-wise, uh, your head, I imagine, is all over the place. You not only have the impending release of the EP, as you said, but it's also the EP release show. Uh, does it help having both happening in the same day? Like, they distract from each other, so you don't have to dwell and focus on one over the other? <laughs> Um, they kind of compound each other really like <laughs> anxiety wise <laughs> because you're like you like like thinking anxiety about the show which kind of diminishes the anxiety about the release but then you remember the release and then you get anxious about that and then you and then realize oh god and there's the show as well but it's like it is exciting to have them both happening at the same time and kind of being able to like share it and celebrate with everyone while it's while it's like really fresh and stuff because we'll we'll be kind of reacting like live because obviously it's going to come out on midnight on the 20th and then that that whole first day people will be streaming and stuff hopefully and then that night we can sort of be like what does everyone think <laughs> kind of thing a culmination of all your work. I mean, it, it's a long road. It is a long road to any release. The build can involve a lot, a lot of work. It's a long and winding road, road to the release. Um, looking back over the period, the build, this uh, this journey to this release and this release show, what have been some of your favourite moments of this build? Um, definitely being in Marshall Studios, like recording the EP, that was like really special. Like we went in with, Mikey Demas, the guitarist of Skin Dread, which is just like a, yeah, really surreal and a real privilege to like go into such a beautiful studio with him producing our music, you know, with, with such huge fans of Skin Dread. Um, yeah. So to have him involved in the project was just like made it like, you know, felt kind of felt like almost once in a lifetime thing, really, to get, in, get to be in a studio like that. You know, in the studio, they had like George Michael's piano there just because, you know, it's like, it's, it was stuff like that that just made it like really quite an out of body experience really. Um, so like being there and getting to go in for a period and then we came back again after our download performance for, just to finish it off and stuff. So that like definitely looking back very fondly on on that time, like really, really exciting time. And um, yeah, so that's definitely one of the, one of the highlights um, we, also really enjoyed recording and uh, filming the skin music video um mm. which we did with like a proper budget for the first time ever um because that was kind of like one of the big like sort of prizes of winning the deal was to get like a proper budget for the first single music video um yeah. so we really went all out and um that was a really cool day like we brought in a makeup artist and we had like a friend of ours act in it and um yeah hired like an amazing videographer to direct it and film it and everything and yeah that was that was really cool as well so it's it's definitely as you say it has been like a long and winding journey and I think like it would be a shame to lose sight of like all the really cool moments that led up to it because I think like so much focus is placed on it's coming out and like are people going to stream it are people going to like it? what are people going to think but like it has been like a really cool really lovely um process for us leading up to this point so yeah definitely don't want to lose sight of that you obviously uh, as well will have learned so much you talk about these experiences first times ever and what you've been able to gain by working with Marshall and the experience do you feel like when you look back at it you have learned lots about not just about like the industry and what all of that involves but yourselves um because you've been put in these not unusual situations but new situations yes yes definitely like we we've come come kind of through this and going into this ep release like knowing 
a lot about ourselves and what we want to do and what we want to achieve and like what we're about as a band and like the things that are important to us because yeah definitely you know when you get a record label involved for the first time and working with a producer like Mikey for the first time like you know there's push and pull and there's people with you know people have a vested interest in this for the first time like before it's just been the four of us whereas now we've had these external parts kind of coming in being part of the team and just like suggesting stuff i think you know having 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 um external perspectives on what you know what things could be like it forces you to uh really think about what your priorities are as creators i think yeah it's like they almost I don't think they were doing it. I don't know. Maybe they part of them. Maybe part of it was to kind of test us and like see what we were about and how mm. we were going to respond to some of these like suggestions and things. Because I think like you can get, you know, you can move in any which way direction at, at such an early stage in your career. Um, so yeah, it definitely helped us like find our resolve and be like, this is what we're happy with this is what we don't want to do. This is what we really do want to do. And so, yeah, we've definitely come like through this to this point, feeling like quite um, sort of strong in our identity as a band, for sure. I gather it does mean quite a lot to release this particular record. What do you, what do you, what do you hope it says about you as a group as you stand here, tail end of 2024? So, you know, we're kind of, you know, we're reaching the end of the year and you're reflecting on what you've done this year. So yeah, what do you hope it says about you? We hope that it shows um, how serious we are about our craft and our art, um, that when given the resources, we like throw everything at it and we try and create something that is like a real soundscape. It, like it has its own voice and its own, um, it has it has something, it has a real place kind of in in the scene um and i think yeah we want you know we want people to look at it and think like yeah they're serious contenders um and they they're going to go on to do something big if they get given the chance kind of thing and like um and i think as well in terms of like messaging and kind of um the meaning behind the songs i think we want it to land with people that feel kind of different and feel maybe like a little bit alienated in the world mm -hmm. and stuff and 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 sort of, you know, I we hope that people will kind of listen to it and like feel a little bit seen or if, if they've been going through similar things to us. Like if, you know, a lot of what we've written kind of comes from experience of like chronic illness and neurodivergence and stuff. But I think more broadly than that, like we are living in a in a scary world, like things are changing really rapidly and you know, while there's a lot of uncertainty that comes with living with chronic illness, I think everyone's feeling that uncertainty and anxiety at the moment. And um, yeah, I think that we sort of want to be that kind of voice a little bit going forward. Okay, that's, that, I mean, that's fantastic. Cause that's, that's kind of right, the vibe I'm getting. So right, the EP I think is immense. It is a fantastic showcase for me personally of learning who you are were who you are and particularly what you stand for your messaging and um i think those who do check it out can learn a lot about you just through the four songs immediately um so you was that with the when with the release was that a goal that you wanted to make sure you created something that did display as much as possible who you who you are it's actually really interesting the, the where the songwriting for these songs started because we wrote started writing the songs before we knew that we were even gonna get the record deal or like win the Kerrang radio competition at all because we um we found out in I think it was in January that we were in the semi-finals of the competition and at that point we started we started writing for the possible event that we would win. Um because basically we, we knew that as soon as we if we were to win, that as soon as we found out that we won, we'd be going in the studio pretty soon. Yeah. So we, we we decided that we'd need to have an EP ready to you know like be prepared to win kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so when we actually were writing the songs, we didn't know that they were going to be released at all. You know, we had a we had a different plan for this year that was nowhere near as exciting and uh, um, 
amazing as what actually has happened. But you know, there was a there was a plan there before that. So when we started writing it, it was kind of like this is for the best case scenario if we win and we get to do all these amazing things and play download and all these kind of, you know all this kind of stuff. That was like a you know a thing that we made just in case uh, the best thing happened, and it did. So um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, like we, you know, we we wanted to create four songs that said a lot about us for sure. But I think really at the time when we were writing, it was just like a raw moment of, you know, of a reflection of, of the sorts of things we'd been dealing with over the last sort of year or so um, as a group. Um, so it kind of, yeah, it, I think it does say a lot about us, but that was maybe not necessarily such a conscious intention when we were writing. It, I, I, it's just natural, right? Because ultimately you are writing for yourselves. You're writing about what you feel and what you think and what you experience. So obviously it's going to come through regardless whether you intend it or not. Yeah. So I find that really interesting. So your plans were potentially very, very different. That's mm. a significant shift and a change. I mean, obviously for the better and it's fantastic, the end result. So no complaints there. But when you're particularly in the early points of your band and you, you know you kind of need to have that structure with and those plans laid out having to just change them to this wild new thing how easily did you cope with that <laughs> we don't cope with change that well <laughs> as people like we are big planners and we're big like strategists and we so you know we're like made this whole plan and we were kind of like this is what we, this is okay, this is what we think 2024 is kind of going to look like for us. Um, we, we had music ready to come out. We had music, we had different music ready to come out. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, we were, but we were looking at, we were looking at a year that we, we were quite worried if, we, if we're being honest, like we were quite worried about the year, like for us as a band, like we were worried that, you know, we didn't, we didn't have maybe like too much industry attention. We felt mm -hmm. like, we didn't know really where things were going to go this for us this year and things it felt very very uncertain yeah. kind of at the end of 2023 but we put this plan together for the year um but then when we found out as larry said that we got shortlisted for this competition in january we were kind of like right we've got to throw everything at this competition because it could be the key to playing download festival it could be the key to that like path into the industry that we really need. Like we were just like, this could be a game changer. So let's put everything we possibly can into like trying to win this thing. And then when we actually won it, I don't know, like Larry was more ready than I was. I think Larry was very much, his headspace was like, prepare to win. We've got the songs. We'll win it, and this is what's going to happen. He's almost like manifesting. He was, all, you know, almost willing it into existence. Whereas I think I, I take a little bit more of an anxious approach, maybe, and I'm a bit like, I'm not going to imagine that something's happened before it's happened, and I kind of, yeah, I, like, winning was both surreal and like affirming for us, mm. feeling like, ah, oh, okay, yes, this is this is actually like. What, what what was meant for us this year and this is gonna this is gonna change everything and in the best way possible yeah and like when we on, on on the day that we won we knew pretty much straight away what we were going to do with the you know we, we have a lot of material that was going to be released this year but we will it will be released just later and in a different form mm -hmm. um and uh we you know when now looking at the moment the horizon is kind of like 2026 and like you know what we're going to be doing that, that far ahead and um pretty quickly we we saw you know with, with this year with download and the marshall ep and stuff like that we were like okay over the next few years this is uh this is what it can look like and um that really helps us uh forge our kind of uh our plans for how we want thing how we want things to look and it you know enabled us to look a lot further into the future than we were looking yeah a nicely laid out uh, plan, but as we see this year, all good plans will can inevitably falter in hopefully a positive way. But let's not underplay and under uh, understate the download thing um, because obviously that was such a huge and important moment. Um, reflect on that. What were you feeling at download itself? Yeah, like, in the yeah. Moment, when we, God, like 
we felt we were terrified. <laughs> we were terrified. <laughs> we were also like, uh, I don't know. It's hard to describe what is like the culmination of like a lifetime of dreams. Yeah. Like it's hard to describe that, like actually being in that moment and realize obviously, you know, like, but it's like the reason that it's really a huge reason why we're in the band and like Larry having gone every year pretty much since 2012 and it just being like such a huge it's yeah it is really hard to put into words to then like actually be there and be in the position to be an artist performing at download after going for so many years and seeing bands do it and thinking this is what we where we want to be actually like living that was really bizarre um and felt felt like a huge honor mm. um and, and and a huge honor and also really really odd because we were like backstage with the likes of like Tom Morello um Ral Reynolds you know like the guys from While She Sleeps and just like you know walking around in the mud with those guys it, <laughs> it does like humanize the whole process a lot um while simultaneously feeling like a real surreal uh, moment. Did you feel like you belonged? I imagine that there, whether you, whether you like it or not, there will be times when imposter syndrome sinks in just somewhat, whether it be there in the studio and so on. But did you, did you, were you able to get to a place where you confidently felt like you belonged? You had earned this. For me, I, 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 I did feel like, I uh, feel like I, I belong to be honest. I mean, I was, uh, like Jess said, I've been to download every year since like 2012 or whatever. And um, it's, you know, a huge part of my calendar every year has always been to go to download. And um, so naturally playing it was always a goal. And that, that meant that it was for me a huge deal to be able to do it. Um, but then when I arrived on, on show day, it was, I actually felt really calm because um, I, I got on the site and I was like, oh yeah, this is download. I've been here like 11 times or whatever it was. Um, it's like, it's like home to me and I feel, I, I feel so comfortable there. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's the place that I return to every year. And like, every time you walk through the gates for the first time, it's like, ah, it's download. These are my people. This is the music I like the best. And, um, so yeah, it felt, it felt weirdly, uh, um, reassuring from that point of view but yeah kind of like as Jess was saying being backstage and seeing all the people that we like all the artists that we look up to um, in such a kind of uh, normalised like humanised way was kind of that was reassuring as well it wasn't like um, you, like the likes of Tom Morello or whatever were like all sort of guarded off and yeah uh, on like you know golden thrones you know, you know we've got security guards and everything it was, it was just kind of like in the food tent Everyone was in there. You saw literally everyone from, um, you know, bands who were playing similar slots to us or um, like some sleeps and stuff. And yeah, they're just, uh, they're just there having the catering with everyone else and um, just kind of existing. And then you, you sort of realise when you're in that environment, it's like, yeah, they're, they're just people, they're just musicians. And obviously they're a lot further up the, the ladder than we are, but they're just, they're just there existing and doing their best and you know they're a bit tired or they're covered in mud or whatever yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're just people and um that was really nice to see you know it's uh it's nice to be reminded that um bands like that at some stage were at a position like like what we're in when they were playing the the, the low down slots on the in the tent and um yeah it kind of made the whole it made the whole thing a bit less a bit less scary i think a bit less daunting just to see just to see everyone kind of brought to a similar level like that blew by though didn't it sorry it's blue by though didn't it your time on stage is gone oh yeah, yeah. Like i don't 25 minutes i don't even remember it felt like yeah felt like two minutes and we were there like we because we were first on on, the, on our stage we we got on the stage about two hours before we went on but we were there for quite a long time which is really helpful because you know that tent is a hell of a lot bigger than anything we'd ever played before and just the whole operation you know like we had quite a large crew and we had all these uh stage design things like this big sign and stuff that we had and then a backdrop and you know like all these things that we've never 
had before. We had this, you know, this whole operation which was quite uh, quite new to us, and um, it was very useful to be in that space for quite a long time before having to do it. Um, so that you know that meant that when we walked on stage, it was all a little bit less of a blur. But you know, that being said, you walk on stage and then sort of get yourself comfortable, and then it's like you know it's, it's time to walk off again because it's twenty five minutes goes very very fast when you're that. You know, there's that much adrenaline going around. Until next time, basically. Think that's a good time in the past and reflect on it. And then we look forward to the next good thing. Hopefully the next time you play download higher up with a longer slot, slot and so on. And all the other festivals that you can easily, easily play. But of course, the good things start this week. We did, we've talked about the EP. I want to come back to that, particularly uh, your approach in regards to confidence. So one of the things I, I'm a listener, one of the things I've taken away from it is that I believe you. I feel your emotion. I feel your truth. I get you from it. Not just in the vocals either, but in the music too. So that aspect of things, being comfortable enough to open up mm. uh, as the way you do on this record, that is not easy for a lot of people, but it's something you seem to, I'll say you seem to take it in your stride and it seems easy to you. How comfortable ha are you first opening up like that? And has it taken you a while to get to this stage? That's a good question. It's taken an age, isn't it? It's taken us a long time. Yeah, like rewind to 2020 um, mm. when we sort of really just started making music together, the four of us. There's a stark contrast, I think, in like in the how personal the music is in, um, yeah, the opening up and in the confidence and stuff. It's kind of we've it's been it's been like a it's been on a trajectory like it's not it's not been there the whole time um and i think really like for us i think the reason why now we're kind of opening up and we're we've got that confidence it's really because we've realized that what we're writing is what we need to write oh, yeah. um so rather than viewing it as like okay we're going to write a new song should we open up in this one or not yeah. It's like the songwriting process starts with having a difficult time with X, let's put it into music. So it's it's a completely integral part of the process. It doesn't, it's not separate to it. Um, and, you know, the songwriting process, it starts with Larry putting down like an instrumental demo. Um, so it always begins with him and the way he is able to capture a feeling into music, pass it on to me to then put my interpretation of that feeling into like vocals and lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of is like a creative dialogue between the two of us, but it's a way that we, yeah, express like difficult things that we're dealing with. How, how comfortable or how easy has it, always, has it been for you, particularly as you've grown as artists, to distill those feelings into something quite tangible? Because ultimately, depending on what it is, it can be quite wide and almost overwhelming to a point you then need to take that, distill it into a musical form, pass it on to you to then take your your vibe from it, what you're feeling. It, it's, from my perspective, it seems almost too too hard. Yeah, it's... Um... It's it, it's not something that I've that I've always been able to do, and it's something that I um, discovered that I was able to do, or sort of ended up having to be able to do it when I became unwell. You know, I've um, I got I, I had COVID in twenty twenty two, and I I still haven't recovered to this day, um, and it's had a profound, it's like really really drastic impact on my life, and um, really limited my you know, quality of life, I suppose, and yeah. all of these really, uh, really significant changes that have, that have happened to me, I've uh, um, not been able to express them or deal with them in a way that you would perhaps other life changes, um, you know, and um, songwriting and music has been the one thing that I have stubbornly refused to not give up and therefore um, became a a, a conduit for me to um, process the, the difficult things that, I, that I've been going through and I found it very cathartic and um, I, I found it necessary really um, as uh, like the only way that I can get out um, these uh, the, these feelings that are, that, are, that are really quite difficult sometimes and it, it, 
you know, it's a it, it's a topic that a lot of people um, that I know personally, although they're supportive, can't really relate to because mm -hmm. they don't. It, it's a difficult thing to to understand unless you go through it or it, you, you, if someone really really close to you goes through it. So, um, um, well, you know, like even then, I think unless you unless you've gone through it yourself, it is really difficult yeah. um, to to know exactly what it's like. And so, I I find it a lot a lot um easier to impart th th those kind of feelings into an instrumental than it is to express it with words um, to people and um you know ultimately uh if if someone can sit and listen to our music um like an like the ep you know front to back for the whole you know 15 minutes or whatever it is um that's that's almost like the best i can do in terms of communicating what it's like to to go through what I've been through in the last uh, couple of years or so, um, that's uh, almost the the most accurate way that I can communicate to people. Um, you know the uh, hardest things that I've had to deal with. It is incredible. I'm glad you said that because uh, particularly about um, people not understanding unless they've gone through it because empathy is one thing, but it, it's oh, it is impossible. You can hear, we can listen, we can. Okay, we can feel, we can get what perhaps you're trying to express, but going through it, it's, it's impossible to fully know. Do, do, uh, do you do you mind though that about interpretation? Like, do you mind if, say, perhaps specifically what you were feeling or wanted to get across is misinterpreted or interpreted in a different way? No, not at all. I think um, you know, from my point of view as a listener of other music, um, all of my favourite songs have a certain meaning to me in my life. You know. A lot of it is to do with when songs came out or when they were when you were exposed to them if, if you're going through certain changes in life and you discover music that helps you through that period of time the the chances that the artist was exactly intending that to help you in that way is pro pro probably pretty slim but the, the connection and the meaning that you get from that is uh perfectly legitimate and um yeah like if if our music relates to people in a way that is a is adjacent to what we put into it uh that doesn't mean it's not real it doesn't mean it's it's not uh um it's not important to the listener so no not really yeah exactly i think like all we can do as musicians is um write about what we know and how we're feeling and put that down and we hope that it connects with anyone who needs to hear it for, yeah. for whatever reason you know it's like i think and as i've said like the specific experience of chronic illness or disability isn't something that everyone's going to be able to directly relate to. But I think the themes of yeah, like broader. the broader themes of uncertainty, not knowing what direction your life is going in, are things going to get better, are things going to get worse? Grief of losing a part of yourself or losing someone you love or, you know, these things, they are broader things that I think a lot of people really get and, you know also the the, the like the I really angry tracks like vultures and skin um about feeling different and feeling alienated and things like I think I think that is something that a lot of people will resonate with um so yeah we definitely we don't pigeonhole ourselves at all no you do not and um that's really important because while you and the CP are you know you sit under the banner of alternative that wide and open terminology um and we as listeners we like to pigeonhole you you need to sit in a one genre or another however with you i find that quite fun that you don't really you are quite indefinable um it seems like you don't have many boundaries when it comes to musical experimentation is that the case do you like and enjoy being quite open-minded as to what you can do and what you think your sound is yes hugely that's such a big thing for us like yeah, love that, love that you pick up on that because, yeah, the mu music that we have that's currently unreleased, so not just this EP, but music to come, it does, you know, yeah, it doesn't fit within specific boundaries. We do write from a feeling rather than um, writing to fit a genre or to mm. fit in a box, like, and whatever, whatever comes to us, we're going to put out there. Yeah. And people will know that that's Malavora, that, it, that well, whatever it is, that's still us. It's still going to sound like us, um, but it might, yeah, transcend like subgenres. And yeah, we, we, 
you know we we don't we're we're not like two dimensional we're we we have we have a lot to bring and we can't like to to restrict ourselves to being like we just want to do groove metal or whatever you know it, it feels restrictive and it like our life experiences and our emotions and things don't fit in that they're broader than that so we will make anything that reflects like what we're going through really. yeah and, you know that's that's how we end up having songs like echoes come out you know that's very very different to anything we put out before and doesn't necessarily sit in the same genre as the other tracks um uh but you know i mean for me i i think it's one of the best things we've ever done and it, it, even though it's quite different and um that's because it's true to the uh the, the emotions that went into it and so yeah. um if, if we were to say oh you know that doesn't really fit the style that we've done before that would be you know that would limit us from expressing the things that we need to yeah i think like you know what we're doing we're we're doing something authentic and to 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 be like oh this is what we want to make but oh hang on it doesn't sound exactly it's not it doesn't really fit into the same box as the last song that wouldn't be authentic um and i'm not sure we would be really happy doing that yeah. um yeah we also found that uh, the majority of listeners or the people that have spoken to you or messaged you however it might be have spoken to you about um the themes uh, not just behind the ep but also behind um you as individuals and what the band and things like you know the the, the, the desire to affect change within the industry better inclusivity, all of that stuff. Uh, have you found that most people, or the majority of people have come to you and seen it from a positive perspective? Because almost there's a sense that there will be a selection of people who'll be quite cynical about it. Oh, it's such a, a, a stuck industry on a path that's always been this way and any attempt to change it is like hammering sheet metal. Like, But have you found the majority of people are quite positive and want what you want? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely we, we have we found yeah the vast majority of people are positive. Um, I think I think though like positive sentiment and like willingness mm. to put that into action are two quite different things. Like I think I think I think the vast vast majority of people that we encounter are like on board with the idea of like making music more accessible and including everyone and stuff. But I think like the steps to actually take to put that into practice that's maybe where the shift needs to happen, um, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, where do you even begin? Sometimes that's what it almost feels like for, for an individual person uh, who has this, has the sentiment and maybe wants to be, have, you know, create some more direct action, but it feels so big and it's almost overwhelming. And how do you begin? I mean, you want that. How do you begin if you're an individual who wants to be involved in some way? Yeah, that, that, I think that's a great question. I think... Um, yeah, I think going back to the idea of like, oh, it's a great idea, but I think lots of people see it as something that someone else will deal with um, or something that maybe isn't their responsibility or, yeah, totally on board, but I'm not the one who's going to do anything about it kind oh. of thing. And I totally get that. It, as you say, it can feel overwhelming and you don't know where to start. But I think, you know, if you're an artist, for example, um, you can just like find out about the accessibility that's at the shows that you're playing. So at the venues, you just speak to the venues, ask them what is in place and communicate that to your fans. That's one really key thing that artists can do at any level, bigger artists and, you know, not even huge artists, but artists with some sort of say over their headline shows and the venues that they're playing can choose to play more accessible venues so that more people mm. can attend. If you're, if you're a, if you're a, a gig goer and just like an audience member and you like are on board with the message and stuff, you can contact the promoters, you can contact the event organizers and the artists for the shows that you're going to and say, you know, what's being put in place for disabled people? Um, is there gonna be a seated area if people need to sit down? You know, the, the more the audience members raise it, the more noise that is made, the harder it is to ignore as a thing because it's clear that everyone cares and um, is is watching to see what's being done. Um, so in that way, audience members can put can like put some accountability or um, sort of yeah hold kind of the industry to account a little bit. Um, and as an, as the industry, like <laughs> as the industry, I you know we do think that the onus should be on the industry to be 
yeah, improving the physical infrastructure of venues, but, you know, much more than that, it's at events at any sort of location. There's so much that can be done from like, you know, captioning, BSL interpreters, um, avoiding using strobe, like having quiet spaces, like having seated areas, like there's, there is so much that can be done outside of the realms of just like putting a ramp at the door kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I think it kind of does need to be seen as like something urgent that that action needs to be done. Um, yeah. And so that it's not this impossible task that is just like requires loads of money and there's nothing that can be done if you don't have loads of money because there's so much you can do for free. And, and su supporting artists who are championing it as well, I think it's really important, you know, like mm. we make as much noise as we can which is, you know, like th there is a, a limit on on the impact that we can have. Well, you know, we do um, we do as much as we can, and we Oops. you know we uh, put a lot of a lot of uh, thoughts into the things we could implement to make our headline shows as welcoming and, and accessible as possible. And as long as people uh, support us and show up to show up to see it, we will keep we, we will keep doing it and keep keep improving. There are things we, we we know this. There are things that are improving um, and have been improving over the years, but there is a very long way to go. A very long, long way to go, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, more voices, louder. Um, fingers crossed, we can get there. Um, and we also want people to be as loud as possible about your EP, of course. As to remind everyone, it's out on the twentieth, and it is Echoes. Uh, this is a very important release, and I think it's going to go down incredibly well with a wide listener base, which is so so important. So when you reflect on that and I ask you this question: What do you what do you hope listeners take away from it in the end? Oh, um, I think I think what we want is to build a community where people who feel like they don't belong in the world can belong in our space. Like we really want to like craft a space where people can be themselves, people feel safe. Um, and like unite kind of the maybe like the people who are a little bit weird or a little bit different um <laughs> or yeah who just haven't felt like particularly supported in in life or in society um and so like you know we hope that anyone listening kind of feels that like there's a space for them um if they've been lacking that um because like you know community is so important especially especially now like with the world being as scary as it is and um like we've got to kind of we've got to be there for each other and like uh we've got to find strength in each other um so yeah we just we just we want we, we want the people who need each other to find each other through our music well said Okay, you've given me more than enough of your time, so I'm just going to wrap up with one last one. And it's looking ahead, really. It's next 12 months. We are at the end of 2024. Of course, while we, this week is super important, fingers crossed you're going to take some time to relax afterwards and then look forward to, as you said, you've got a long-term plan uh, leading into 2026, you said. So I'm just going to ask you this question. What is a realistic goal that you would like to achieve next year? Ooh, God, that's a great question. We want to go on our first proper support tour um, we want to we've never done it before we want to support a bigger artist and do like a proper run of dates um definitely in the uk in the eu as well would be amazing <laughs> um asking what a realistic goal is is so tricky because because to be fair like every time we've set a goal for ourselves we've achieved it yeah. we've, we tend to, we've we've achieved it even after being told it's stupid and unrealistic mm. like well, yeah, the download we were, is the perfect example of that. Well, well, yeah, we were, you know, in twenty twenty three, in twenty twenty three or twenty twenty two. When did we play trees? Twenty two. Twenty three. Twenty three. In <laughs> in twenty twenty two, when we said we wanted to play two thousand trees the following year, we were told that that was completely unrealistic, and we weren't at the stage where we'd be able to play two thousand trees. And then we did in twenty twenty three. And then that year when we said in 2024, we're going to play download and we want to play download. Yeah, people actually laughed at us um, and were like, there is just no way that's going to happen. And it happened. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah we don't want to put like limits on ourselves and what we can achieve um because we're quite yeah we're quite <laughs> we're like a, i don't know a ball to a red flag <laughs> we're like we when we set our sights on things like we really we really do kind of try absolutely everything to make it happen mm. so um yeah i think like hopefully big things are ahead for us um yeah and we'll see we'll see this time next year we'll see whether whether realistic a realistic goal was and um, to do what we what we said or whether something much bigger might happen who knows well as it seems to be about manifesting things when people say the opposite um say that again you want to you wanted to do you wanted to you want to do a support slot sh show around the uk tour yeah yeah so yeah. i'll be the person to say respond to that and say nah man not gonna happen you're dreaming yeah, yeah. <laughs> get back in your lane so that way you've now got to prove me wrong yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's happening now. great challenge accepted <laughs> i'm sure it's gonna be a phenomenal year regardless of what happens uh total faith in you i cannot wait to see the response to this ep i know it's going to go down so bloody well because the songs already have and of course the release part i hope that is a lot of fun for you and you enjoyed the week guys thank you so much for taking the time to do this i really appreciate it Thank you so much. We've absolutely loved chatting to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at gbhbl.com, our full website, where reviews, news, and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, at GBHBL. Just search for GBHBL and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.